Elizabeth left Buckingham Palace for the last time today in a historic procession toward Westminster Hall. Britain's new king led the solemn journey behind the horse-drawn gun carriage with his siblings and sons, Princes William and Harry, the royal family's grief on public display. Massive crowds lined the streets across central London to honor the Queen's 70-year reign. The Queen's coffin is draped with a royal flag and topped with the crown she wore for her coronation in 1953. Elizabeth II will lie in state for the next four days. Some camped out for days to be among the first to pass her coffin. She has that magic about her, much more than monarchy. She's an icon of icons. It seems like the right thing to do, you know, being British, and um, that was my queen. The Queen's state funeral will be held here at Westminster Abbey. It's also where she married the love of her life, the late Prince Philip, and it's also where she was crowned queen. This is the end of a remarkable era, and it's farewell to a remarkable lady. A choir sang as part of the service for the Queen's arrival in Westminster Hall. As many as a million people are expected to wait in a miles-long line to say their farewell to their Queen. In London, starting Wednesday afternoon. In a statement, the UK Public Service broadcaster said it would provide a dedicated live stream of Her Majesty the Queen's lying in state for those who want to pay their respects but who cannot come to London or who are physically unable to queue. The live stream will be available on the BBC homepage, the BBC News website and app, among other places. It'll be available from 5 p.m. London time, meaning 12 p.m. Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesday. Authorities have said that people getting in line to walk by the closed coffin in Westminster Hall may have to wait for 30 hours or longer. The coffin will be guarded by members of the British Armed Forces. The Queen's lying in state is scheduled to end at 6.30 a.m. London time on Monday. Her state funeral is scheduled for later that day. Starting to set morning. over Buckingham Palace and really setting on the end of an era. Yesterday has been solemn, but it's also been sunny in the sense of people's chance to reflect, to mourn, but also to give thanks for the Queen. And what I'm struck by is quite how many people seem to have such a personal connection with her. There's just this note on one card that I saw by Bouquet of Flowers uh, that says, I never knew you, yet I clearly loved you. I never met you, yet you have always been there. But now you rest and may you find the peace you deserve. Victoria, you've obviously, as a professional, covered the Queen, but personally, what did today mean for you? I think it's been very pro profound to see this. You know, as you say, I've covered many royal events before, weddings, jubilees. I've never covered anything like this, of course. None of us have ever seen anything like this. And I think the, the initial shock was there. I think it's going to take some time to, to sink in. I think the period that we're in now is we've had this incredible moment of sort of the Queen is dead, long live the King, and the kind of activity around those first few days. But I think now we're in a real kind of moment of reflection. And I think for me, that's how I feel right now. Yeah, and the mood here, guys, absolutely reflects, as I say, it's gone calm, it's gone still, the sun is going down. A moment of reflection over the coming days until the funeral on Monday. Uh, James, you've taken us through uh, so many events really around the world, but this is a um, this is a different assignment for you, my man. Absolutely, TJ. I'm, I've been struck by the history and the modernity, the kind of juxtaposition of both of those things, which really encapsulates Britain. You know, we saw the Queen brought today to Westminster Hall. It goes right back to the beginning of monarchy in Britain. It's a thousand years old. It's been host to the coronation of King Henry VIII. Popes have been visiting. You know, just about every major event in world history somehow has been represented in that in that building. And, you know, we were brought right back to the beginning of, of monarchy with those that be beautiful sound, the choir singing as she was brought in with the candles and, and the royal family behind her, the king and his sons behind. And at the same time, we're standing out here watching modern Britain file past to go and see their queen. It is an extraordinary contrast, but it is one that encapsulates Britain so well. She embodied all our traditions, all the things that we hold dear, all of our history, and yet as well, she was the monarch of a very modern country. And that is what I'm struck by, and I'm made to feel very proud, actually, about it as well. And James, you're standing there reporting on this, but I understand your husband's actually in that queue waiting to pay his final respects to the queen. <laughs> He is, and um, he joined the queue, the line, about 
an hour ago, and I thought he wouldn't make it. There's every chance he's about to turn up because it's been moving so quickly. He is in this line with a friend of ours. This is a guy who's in his 30s. A lot of people around the world would think, well, why would someone in their 30s even begin to care about the Queen, a woman who's 96 years of age? Um, but I think, look at the makeup of the people who are walking past me now. It tells you everything you need to know. There are so many people who are just drawn to be here, no matter where they come from, what their age is, what their background. There's an invisible power that she has over us, like moths to a flame. It's like they're in a trance, brought in to see their queen. And, and, and Alex said to me, he said, I just feel I've got to go. So yeah, so somewhere behind me, at this very moment, he is making his way down the banks of the River Thames. <laughs> Please uh, tell him uh, we said hello. Uh, Lying in state, some mourners have waited more than two days for the chance to walk past her coffin and pay their respects. The Queen was taken to Westminster Hall in a procession as she left Buckingham Palace for the very last time. The CBS for Daniel Backus is there in London and has more on how Queen Elizabeth was honored today. Queen Elizabeth II passed under the Great Arch of Buckingham Palace for the last time a horse-drawn carriage bearing her coffin in a solemn procession. The coffin was topped with foliage from the royal residences, including lavender and pine, and the imperial crown encrusted with thousands of diamonds. Mourners, young and old, many emotional, lined the route to witness the centuries-old tradition and say goodbye to Britain's longest-serving monarch. As the coffin arrived at Westminster Hall, Queen Consort Camilla was at the king's side, and his sons were joined by their wives, Kate and Meghan, the family united in grief. With thy servant, Queen Elizabeth, and all the faithful departed. Then the doors to the 900-year-old hall opened to the public, many bowing their heads to the Queen. The Queen will lie in state here at Westminster Hall for four days. The line extends for miles, as many as a million people are expected to visit. Many were in line overnight for the opportunity and say it was worth the wait. She was a, a beautiful inspiration and such a moving energy in there. It was very hard to see a coffin and not a queen, not our queen. Closure, our queen has been laid to rest. She's at peace. As world leaders make their way to London for Monday's funeral, mourners will visit around the clock. Our honoring Queen Elizabeth II. Here is a live look at Westminster Hall, and that's where the Queen is lying in state. Some mourners have waited more than two days for the chance to walk past her coffin and pay their respects. Either side of the gun carriage, formed by the 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards, you'll notice that their arms are reversed. The swords are turned backwards. The rifles turn back with the left arm to pull the muzzle down, all as an act of respect for the Labour Queen. Garrison Sergeant Major, Mr. Stokes, who has been preparing these soldiers, leads the King and his siblings and other members of the royal family. And in the rear rank of that family, the Earl of Snowdon and the Duke of Gloucester.
the scarlet tunics of the dismounted lifeguards from the house of Passing under Horse Guards Arch marks the departure from the Royal Grounds and this was always the main entrance of the palaces and those palaces bid the Queen well on this her last public engagement. the order's sovereign head. Procession turning left into Whitehall and towards Parliament Square they will shortly pass the entrance to 10 Downing Street and for the Queen's constitutional life she appointed unveiled this Women at War Memorial with the clothes hanging on it that were worn by women helping in the war effort or fighting themselves from 1939 to 1945. Of course, in 1945, the Queen herself as Princess Elizabeth joined the army in the Auxiliary Territorial Force. And in that service, she provided her small part towards the defeat of the tyranny 
in Nazi Germany. During the Queen's reign in the Army, Navy and Air Force, Around the gun carriage, the military equerries who served the Queen, the 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards, march on either side of them, guarding Elizabeth II. Are playing their part in saluting this former sovereign. Queen's personal staff marching in a row there, the palace steward, two of her pages. They would have been in close attendance on the sea, the massive hall of Westminster waiting to greet the late sovereign. And we'll witness as she is taken from the gun carriage and carried into the heart of that hall. There were so many glimpses of Queen Elizabeth's sense of humor during her 70-year reign. The interview not so long ago in the Buckingham Palace Gardens, she was asked why the sundial was firmly planted in the shade. The sundial neatly planted in the shade. Isn't it good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Had we thought of that, that it was planted in the shade? It wasn't in the shade originally, I'm sure. But... Um... <laughs> There was that moment at the G7 just last year, leaders on the world stage. Watch as the Queen asks, are we supposed to be looking interested? Are you supposed to be looking as if you're enjoying it? Yes. <laughs> and of course, her relationship with the U.S. presidents, dancing with Gerald Ford, riding horses with Ronald Reagan. And that funny moment with former President George W. Bush, when he nearly thanked her for helping to celebrate America's independence in 1776. You helped our nation celebrate its bicentennial in, 17, in 1976. This was the Queen's response. Mr. President, I pondered whether I should start this toast saying, when I was here in 1776. <laughs> 